This will be video number four in my interactive video series on field weakening. This one's all about ratios and speed. So I'm going to try to do a test here based on stuff I've read, learned, and heard. I expect complete failure. And you guys got to let me know what to do to make it better. Because this ratios and speed is probably the most baffling thing on the internet. I haven't read two consistent things yet. I set out to completely prove field weakening wrong, to prove it was a myth. Only I was wrong, but fortunately it's not a myth, so the bike went faster. One guy said, leave the field weakening completely off. Go out and just run top speed and see where the bike stabilizes. I've got weak response, seven, none. Ratios and speed, 100% everywhere. 7,700 weak light on, 100 and... So I've already got the weak light, but that's fine. I'm just gonna let it stabilize. Full throttle. Weak response completely off. I'm going 88, 86, 87. Now I'm gonna turn field weakening on and I should be able to go faster. Okay, weak response, I'm gonna put it all in, zero. All these are 100% still. See if I can beat my 87 miles an hour. 89, 91, 90, it's working guys, 94. Okay, we'll call that success. So this next statement I need to be careful with. I now believe ratios and speed as an avenue to field weakening is a myth. I guess the question is, does ratios and speed improve field weakening and therefore increase top speed? Luckily, we have AI. I can just ask AI. How simple is this? You must follow the scientific method. The correct answer you will not know until the right questions are asked. The right question. How can I use ratios and speed to increase the top speed of my e-bike? That's the right question. Step two, scientific process, research. Let's get on Google, do some research. I found a bunch of stuff on this topic. I even wrote some notes down. Let's see, reduce uh, torque at high speeds. Yeah, magnetic field maximum speed flux, D axis, component Q axis, yeah, auto rotate. Uh, here it is. Default weak. Ah, damn sticker in the way. Okay, maximum speed is not limited. Oh no, maximum speed is limited. This shit doesn't make any sense. My hypothesis is that only weak response and weak character affect field weakening. And ratios in speed limit phase amps to the motor. Phase amps don't just come from thin air. They're made from line amps from the battery. Therefore, any reduction in phase amps is also a reduction in line amps. And any reduction in line amps from the battery will result in a slower top speed. So I contend that any percent below 100% in ratios and speeds will make the bike slower. That's a bold statement. I was proven wrong last time. Let's see what happens this time. Now, since I can't make heads or tails out of all that research we did, makes absolutely no sense to me. We're gonna ask AI science guy. We're gonna have him search the whole internet. Endless Sphere Forum, Electric Bike Build group on Facebook, all of Google. And he's gonna tell us what the experts say to do. We're gonna get him to tell us what to set the ratios in speed to, to go faster. We're gonna go out and do it. That's the experiment. Just taper them down. I like to start at 4,000 RPM so I still have takeoff torque. My battery voltage is 98 volts. I want to just take the battery voltage out of the equation. And I want to top speed this thing with a lower battery so we don't have to worry about that during our ratios testing. As you can see, we're going to hit the same top speed. Yeah, there's 96. Whoa, there's that back wheel slide. That thing went sideways on me. That was scary. So I'm still hitting a good top speed even with a low battery. If I get ratios to work, I'll be doing over 100. And you'll know if it works because I'll be in jail. Because Florida has a super speeder law. So I've completely disabled my regen braking. When I let off the throttle that time, the back tire slid and this thing stepped out about a foot sideways. A big sideways slide at 90 miles an hour down the road. So I don't know what the hell's up with that. Frickin' dog in a basket.
Now I already said I don't want to go over 100 miles an hour, but I'm so confident in this myth of ratios that I'm going to go ahead and do the test because I know I'm going to go slower than 97 every single time. All right, AI science guy said taper these down. He said you want to keep the low end torque, so leave these at 100 and start tapering at about 4,000. 90, 85, 80. So this is the most common taper you see for suggested things to do with your ratios and speed. That's as far as I can taper. It only goes to 9,000. No idea why. All right, looks like I've hit a top speed of about 84, 86, 87. I'm gonna go with about 88 miles an hour. All right, AI science guy, hit me with another tip. That didn't work. Start tapering the ratios down when field weakening happens. So he wants me to go where field weakening starts, and he's meaning the weak light, even though we already kind of proved that's a myth. So that's 7,000 RPM, and then taper down from 7,000 RPM. All right, let's try that. So let me get hundreds back in here. That doesn't leave me much taper. That's only, uh, let's see, we'll go with 90%, and then 80 we'll do it by tens and then 70 that'll get us down to 50 at 9,000 all right let's save that and I think it's worth mentioning that as I am tapering these ratios off my takeoff speeds getting slower so yeah 77 78 she's not going much more 82 81 82 81 and when I open the throttle it really chops around bad 84 that actually was worse yeah, that felt a lot worse. All right, AI science guy, you're gonna have to dig a little deeper. Just use 50% above the speed you want field weakening to occur. Be careful as you will easily exceed 200 miles per hour. Okay, so he wants me to hit 50% on everything past where field weakening starts. That's easy, so I got field weakening at 7,000. I'm just gonna go 50s. And this comes from, he probably read that in the book about Field weaken is recommended at 50%. It can go up to 100%, but 50 is recommended. No taper, just 50s. All the way up. There we go. Save. That one does feel better. This 50 thing might be the answer. Let me give it another run. I caught this truck. Yeah, I'm getting 89, 90, 93, 92. Yeah, the 50% one's working pretty good. Whoa, there's that. Whew. That son of a bitch, I gotta come off that throttle even slower. All right, AI science guy, I'm starting to lose faith in following the science really quick. So hook a brother up with another one. Only reduce phase amps ratios to increase the depth of field weakening the RPM where you wanna go faster. All right, so he wants me to just put the field weakening in where I wanna go faster. Well, I obviously wanna go faster at 97 miles an hour. So I'd wanna run a hundreds to everything and then when I get to 97 miles an hour, where the bike is stabilizing, I want to start cutting phase amps. And then the bike will enter field weakening deeper at 97 miles an hour, and I will shoot right up to 100 miles an hour. So 97 miles an hour, that was about 11,000 oh, RPM. What's going on here? I can't go past 9,000 RPM. Well, that's not going to work. Shit. Yeah, none of this crap is working. I've got to stop following the science. When COVID happened, Florida didn't follow the science. They were like, we ain't wearing no mask. We ain't taking no shots. We ain't doing shit, bro. And hell, they fared just as well as everyone else. So I'm gonna quit listening to this AI science guy. He don't know what the hell he's talking about. I gotta find someone that has absolutely no scientific background. Someone that skipped every science class ever. And then get some advice on what to do with these ratios. Ah, there we go. A Florida Circle K. Yeah, that's the place. There's all sorts of guys here with no education spending their EBT cards on big gulps and lottery tickets. I'm gonna go in here and ask for some advice on how to set these ratios. Load up. Turn and burn, baby. Kick it all the hundos and ride. Okay, so Florida man says just open them all up to 100%. And we've already got a test doing that. I went 97 miles an hour. So we're back to where we started. 
I think I solved the back wheel slide though. Thanks, Lou. Yeah, so I had throttle disabled, but I still did have amp set in the regen. So even with amps in the regen and EABS disabled, I was still getting the crazy wheel slide. So it just passed the 80 mile an hour test. Let me try it at 90. I'm scared. All right, coming off this thing. Oh yeah, that was smooth. Okay, cool. Now comes the time in the scientific method where we have to accept or reject the hypothesis. But you have to be really careful here, super careful, because what I created was a null hypothesis, a hypothesis that predicted that the inputs would not have an outcome, that adjusting ratios and speed would not increase the speed of the motorcycle. So before we can draw a conclusion, we need an alternate hypothesis, a hypothesis that directly contradicts the null hypothesis. And that would be, does adjusting ratios and speed increase the speed of the motorcycle? Yes or no? And did we test if that statement is true? Now it seems like we did, when what we actually did was we failed to reject a null hypothesis that is probably false. We accepted a hypothesis after my testing that increasing ratios and speed will not make you faster. But we should have rejected it. This is a type two error in the scientific method. And so this is at a point I think where a lot of us are at, me included. A lot of us are at this point where we tried ratios, we've had a negative outcome, and we're gonna go with Florida Man, and we're gonna turn and burn because using the Florida Man's advice, we've gotten better results. The correct answer you will not know until the right questions are asked. So more specifically, when ratios are set correctly, will it yield a higher top speed than when set at all 100s? We didn't prove that one correct. We didn't reject it either. And we can't reject it because we don't know if we set ratios correctly. We don't know that. And until we know that, then we can't accept the null hypothesis. We also have to ask ourselves if there are any external variables. External variables that threw off the results of our test that we weren't aware of. And I am aware of a couple that I need to fix, but I'm willing to overlook it to accept this null test. That's bad scientific method. First variable, I get a stuttering in the motor. I get it around 11,400 RPM. That has to be solved. That could be messing with my results. Another external factor, this far driver won't support over 12,000 RPM. That's what I've been told. Do I know it? I don't know. That's what I've been told. I've got a motor that at 97 miles an hour is 11,400 RPM. That means for me to see an increase with ratios, I've only got about three miles an hour to play with until I'm at my maximum on the far driver. So running a test that close to a limit is not a good idea either. I probably need to gear this bike up, smaller sprocket in the back, bring that 12,000 RPM way higher than the power can support before I can test any further on ratios in speed. I know it sucks, because I know we want to just run hundos all the way through, like Florida Man says. Kick it all to hundos and ride. And debate that works better, and we have facts to back it up with, and I have proof, but the truth is the test is sour, I have to reject my own hypothesis, which means I have to accept that ratios and speed could possibly still increase my top speed. And I have to change some variables to prove that. I have to first sort out why the motor stutters before 12,000 RPM. The second, I have to get this bike away from 12,000 RPM when I need ratios and speed to help me. It's all happening around 97 miles an hour and 11 to 12,000 RPM. It's too much confusion in the system. So I'm gonna gear this bike up. It may be a dog on takeoff. I don't care if it is, I'll just go back to this gearing after the test. The only thing I can safely say is that tapering ratios, as 90% of the people are telling you, is wrong. Every taper version gave me a slower bike. And I can assume if the bike went slower, it wasn't my jittering 11,000 plus motor affecting it. It wasn't my too low of gearing affecting it because the bike went slower. So I can safely say that tapering your ratios just randomly is not the way to do it. And that's probably the number one way I hear people say to do it. In both versions, the performance was way poorer, but the 50% above 7,000 RPM and just running 50s all the way up, that felt pretty good. The takeoff still felt fast and the top speed was still fast. So something has to be investigated there. And I don't think I can do it until I gear it up and solve my motor issues. So let me know what you think and what I should try because it looks like there's gonna be another video.